quite often when we're trying to find the derivative of a function, we find out we actually have a composite function or a function inside a function. And so that's the question we're going to address today is how do we take a derivative of a composite function. A function inside of a function. And really, the short answer to that is we use something that is called the chain rule, which officially is written that the derivative of a function with another function inside it is equal to the derivative of the outside function, where the inside stays the same. Actually, I should use square brackets there, times the derivative of the inside function. So in words, it's probably easier to remember the chain rule is we take the derivative of the outside times the derivative of the inside. And that's what we're going to take a look at today. I've got seven examples where we basically do this process over and over again. We take the derivative of the outside times the derivative of the inside. But this chain rule is one that you should be very comfortable with completing, working through in order to take derivatives. So let's take a look at some examples. where we take the derivative of the outside times the derivative of the inside. Let's say we've got a function f of x equals 1 over 4x minus 7 cubed. Now, one thing I notice with this, uh, to make it easier to take the derivative, we could use the quotient rule, but that's just way too much work for what we need to do. Because we've just got a 1 in the numerator, this is really 4x minus 7 with a negative 3 exponent, because the negative exponent makes it a reciprocal 1 over that. So what we see we've actually got here is the 4x minus 3 as a block is all raised to the negative 3 power. If this was just uh, x to the negative 3, we know the derivative of that is negative 3x to the negative 4. So that's kind of what we're going to do here. But we're going to use the 4x minus 7 in place of that x. So we pull the exponent out front. And f prime of x is equal to negative 3 times the base, the 4x minus 7, all to the negative 4 power. Now the only thing we have to do is multiply by the derivative of the inside. And the derivative of 4x minus 7 is just 4. We'll clean that up a bit. Uh, let's. See, the negative 3 times 4 is negative 12. So we've got negative 12 times 4x minus 7 to the negative 4 power as our final derivative. But the idea here is we identified that we've got that 4x minus 7 inside another function, which is the x to the negative 3. So we took the derivative of the outside times the derivative of the inside. So let's look at another one. Let's say we had f of x equals the square root of 3x squared minus 7x plus 1. Now again, we recognize square root is really an exponent. We've really got 3x squared minus 7x plus 1 to the 1 half power. 
And so what we need to recognize here is we have a function inside of a function. What we really have is the 3x squared minus 7x plus 1, that function sitting inside a 1 half power. In other words, this is kind of the same idea as if we had x to the 1 half power. We know how to take the derivative of x to the 1 half power. That's 1 half x to the negative 1 half, bringing the exponent out front and then reducing the exponent by 1. The only difference is instead of having an x, we're going to have the 3x squared minus 7x plus 1. So our derivative is we pull the exponent out front. It's 1 half times the stuff, 3x squared minus 7x plus 1. And then we reduce the exponent by 1, giving us negative 1 half. The only thing we have to do in addition is multiply by the derivative of what's inside. The derivative of 3x squared minus 7x plus 1 is 6x minus 7. And there we have our final answer. The only thing we might want to do is clean up a bit because we've got that negative exponent and a fraction going on. I'll leave the 6x minus 7 in the numerator. The 2 is in a denominator. And the 3x squared minus 7x plus 1 with the negative exponent moves down. That just cleans it up. It's not really a needed step, but it does make it a little prettier. But now we have our derivative. Let's try to increase in complexity a little bit as we continue working through these problems. Let's go to a trig problem. What if we have f of x equals the cosine of 5x squared? With this one, what you notice is we have got the 5x squared sitting inside of a cosine. So we'll take the derivative of the outside times the derivative of the inside. So the derivative of cosine is, let's mark this as f prime of x equals, the derivative of cosine is negative sine of the stuff, 5x squared. And then we multiply by the derivative of the inside, which is 10x. Clean this up a little bit, uh, and we'll move the 10x to the front. So we just see negative 10x sine of 5x squared. And we've got our derivative, the derivative of the outside times the derivative of the inside. What about this one? f of x equals secant squared of x. What's the outside and what's the inside function? Another way to think about secant squared of x is that's really secant of x squared. So actually, our inside function is the secant of x. The outside function is that we're squaring it. So if we're squaring it, we know we bring, for f prime of x, we bring the exponent out front and then reduce the exponent by 1. And we multiply by the derivative of the inside. The derivative of secant is secant tangent. Just to clean this up a bit, secant times secant is secant squared. So we have 2 secant squared x tangent x. And we've got our derivative. Let's try another one.
how about if we had f of x is equal to cosecant of 3x squared minus 5x. Again, we've got a function inside of a function. Identifying what's inside is the 3x squared minus 5x. So we'll take the derivative of the outside times the derivative of the inside. And the derivative of cosecant is negative cosecant cotangent. So we have f prime of x equals negative cosecant of the stuff, 3x squared minus 5x, cotangent of the stuff, 3x squared minus 5x, times the derivative of the inside. Well, the derivative of the inside, using our power rule, is 6x minus 5. There's not much to clean up on this one. The only thing we might be able to do is move the 6x minus 5 to the front so it's really clear that that part is not part of the cotangent or cosecant. So we have negative 6x minus 5. Don't lose the parentheses cosecant of 3x squared minus 5, cotangent of 3x squared minus 5. And we found our derivative. To make these a little more exciting, we can combine different rules together to find derivatives. Number 6 is an example of this, where we have f of x equals 4x plus 5 cubed times 2x squared minus 6x plus 1 to the seventh power. This problem is going to combine the chain rule along with the product rule. So we see we're working with a product. But the product is of functions within functions. On the left side, we see 4x plus 5 is inside the cubed function. On the right side, we see 2x squared minus 6x plus 1 is inside the seventh power function. So let's use our product rule along with our chain rule in order to find the derivative. The product rule says we take the derivative of the first part times the second part. So the derivative of the first part, we bring the exponent out front, 3 times 4x plus 5. Reduce the exponent by 1, so it's squared. And then we multiply by the derivative of the inside, which is just 4. Then, that's the derivative of the first part. We still need to multiply by the second part, 2x squared minus 6x plus 1 to the seventh power. Plus, now the product rule says we take the derivative of the second part times the first part. The second part is a chain rule again. We bring the 7 out front times 2x squared minus 6x plus 1. Now to the sixth power, because we've reduced the exponent by 1, times the derivative of the inside. The inside has a derivative of 4x minus 6. And that part is the derivative of the second part. We still have to multiply by the first part, which is 4x plus 5 cubed. From here, there's just a little bit of cleanup. I'm going to multiply 3 times 4 to get 12 times 4x plus 5 squared times 2x squared minus 6x plus 1 to the seventh power. 
The second part doesn't really have any cleanup to do, so we'll just keep that all the same. 7 times 2x squared minus 6x plus 1 to the sixth power times 4x minus 6 times 4x plus 5 cubed. And that big, ugly thing is the derivative of our function. Notice to get that derivative, we had to combine both the chain rule and the product rule. We knew the product rule was the derivative of the first times the second plus the derivative of the second times the first. But in order to take those derivatives in each of those parts, we had to use the chain rule, where we took the derivative of the outside times the derivative of the inside. We not only can combine the chain rule with other rules, we can combine the chain rule with the chain rule. If we've got functions inside of functions inside of functions, we can just keep applying the chain rule, taking the derivative of the outside times the derivative of the inside times the derivative of what's inside that times the derivative of what's inside that until we run out of things to take the derivative of. So for our final example, if f of x is equal to the tangent cubed of 5x squared minus 7, what you'll see we have here, and maybe we should rewrite. Remember, tangent cubed means we really have the tangent of 5x squared minus 7 to the third power. So we've got a tangent inside of cubed. But then we've also got a 5x squared minus 7 inside of the tangent. And those colors are overlapping, making it very difficult to see. But you get the idea. So we're going to first take the derivative of the outside function, which is cubed. So for the derivative of a cubed, we pull the 3 outside and reduce the exponent by 1. Now it's tangent squared of 5x squared minus 7. Then we take the derivative of the inside. Well, the derivative of tangent is the secant squared of the inside stuff. 5x squared minus 7. But we're still not done because we can take the derivative of the inside stuff, which is going to be the 5x squared minus 7. The derivative of that is just 10x. Cleaning up a little bit, 3 times 10 is 30. So f prime of x is equal to 30x tangent squared of 5x squared minus 7 times secant squared of 5x squared minus 7. And now we've got our derivative, which required us to use the chain rule on the chain rule, which all we do is just start peeling off layers, like peeling the layers off an onion, derivative of the outside times the derivative of what's in that, times the derivative of what's in that, times the derivative of what's in that, until we finally reach the end. So that's the chain rule. The chain rule is we just keep taking derivatives and multiplying until we reach the far inside of our function. This video is a little bit shorter because it's going to give you time to practice this on your own before you come to class. And then we'll dive into it a little deeper in class and answer any questions. I'll look forward to seeing you then so that we can work on the chain rule.